This video segment is going to be on standing waves, so let's start it out by taking a look at some a demo of some standing waves. Okay, so in this uh, video of the standing waves, you can see Mr. Gibbs is on the left and Emmanuel's on the right. Emmanuel's functioning as a fixed point, so he's holding the spring very still, and Mr. Gibbs is moving the spring so that it demonstrates uh, different standing waves. And we can see at the beginning there were two um, two humps, now there's three, um, and now there's going to be four, so he's increasing the number of waves that are showing each time. So in order to increase them he has to flick his wrist even harder and harder. So we're going to get into the details of each of these different what we call harmonics of standing waves um, very shortly. Okay, so as we can see in this visual, we have different size standing waves. And let's go through exactly what is a standing wave before we get into the details. So a standing wave is essentially a wave pulse being sent down, and it's also reflecting back um, almost concurrently. So it looks like this uh, figure here at the bottom. Um, but at, actually, at any given point in time, it's either in this position here at the top or it's in this position here at the bottom or somewhere in between. So we constantly see this figure at the bottom. So we have this incident wave that's being sent down and then we have a reflected wave being sent back. And we, can, we know that this is a, an example of fixed end reflection because the wave is being sent back on the opposite side. Okay, so let's look at the details of a standing wave. So at point B and point G, these are called crests. They're the highest point of a wave. And at point E, those are called troughs. They're the lowest point of a wave. We like to call these antinodes. So the highest and lowest points are called the antinodes. And the points that exist on this uh, line of equilibrium which are, which are the points that don't really move, they're called the nodes, they're stationary points, a point of zero displacement. Something else that you need to know is the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from this line of equilibrium to the highest point, or from the line of equilibrium to the lowest point. It's the max displacement. So it's the distance from a node to an antinode, vertically upward. A wavelength is the shortest horizontal distance in which the wave repeats itself. So, for example, from crest to crest would be a wavelength. Or from uh, one node, skip a node, to the next node. That is one wavelength. You can see that it looks like a sideways S sh shape. Or it could even be from trough, from trough to trough. But in this picture, we don't have another trough. But it's the same distance in any of those three cases. Okay, so the next topic that we need to apply to standing waves is that of frequency. So let's go with something we know already. So we know wavelength. Wavelength is the size of one wave. So if we look here, this is one complete cycle or one wave. As we go down this spectrum from A to F, we can see that the size of the wavelength is decreasing as we go down. So this relationship is as wavelength is going down, the frequency, or how um, often these cycles are repeated, is going up. So frequency goes up. Same thing if we were to look at this spectrum from t bottom to top. We can see that our wavelength is increasing as we go up the spectrum. So wavelength increases. And the number of cycles as we go up the spectrum that we see is decreasing. So the frequency is decreasing. So there's this inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. So when it comes down to it on an equation, we're going to have an equation that looks something like this. Wavelength times frequency being multiplied by each other on one side of the equation. And what it happens to be 
which we're going to soon find out, is it's the velocity. The velocity of the wave is going to equal the wavelength times the frequency. We call this the wave speed equation. So the next relationship that we need to talk about is that of period and frequency. So period is the amount of time per cycle, or seconds per cycle, so our units for period are seconds. And frequency is the number of cycles per second, which we, we rename, instead of one over seconds, it, we rename it as a unit of hertz, hz. So there is an inverse relationship between these two, so an equation that relates the two would be t equals 1 over f, or period is 1 over frequency, and frequency is 1 over period. So let's apply that in an example. So let's say that we have a frequency of 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, and we want to know what the period of that particular wave is. Is this? And just to be clear about units, hertz is really the number of cycles per second, so hertz is 1 over s, that's what its equivalent is, and we want to know what the period is. So period is the number of seconds per cycle, so really we want the inverse of the frequency. So all we need to do is 1 divided by 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Well, that's just 5 times 10 to the negative 14. And for our units, in our numerator, it's 1. In our denominator, it's hertz, which really is 1 over 1 over seconds, which leaves us with seconds. So this is the number of seconds per cycle it would be for this particular wave. Okay, so for an example for using wave speed, let's look at this scenario. We have a water wave with a speed of 0.25 meters per second, causes a cork to move up and down four times in eight seconds. So every time the cork moves up and down, that means one wave must have passed through it. So if it moves up and down four times, that means four waves have passed through in that given time, which gives us some information. We know the velocity, it's 0.25. We know that it moves up and down, so that's one wave, but it's actually four times, four up and down, so it's four waves pass through in eight seconds. So since four waves or four cycles occur in eight seconds, the frequency is a half a hertz. And our equation for wave speed is V equals F lambda, but in this case, we're looking for lambda, the wavelength. Lambda is the name of that Greek letter that you see, the upside down Y, but we call it lambda. So if we solve for lambda, we get V over F, and we get 0.25 meters per second divided by a half a hertz, which is really 0.5 meters. So our wavelength in this case is 0.5, option four. So one thing that we learned in the last video with the um, wave demonstrations is, the, is what if exactly affects the speed of a wave. And we know that there are variables that affect the speed of waves and strings. One of them is tension. So the greater the tension, the greater the speed. Another one is the density of the string. So we noticed in the last video that when we had a large coil uh, combined with a uh, smaller coil, that the wave speed changes as it travels from one density to the other. But if we talk about just the density of the string itself, that plays a role in the wave speed as well. So density of the string, we call this the linear mass density, and we're gonna use the Greek letter mu, which we've used before for the coefficient of friction. So mu is the amount of mass per length. So m is mass in kilograms, l is length in meters. So mu, therefore, is m over l, or kilogram per meter. And the speed of a wave in a string, so this is another speed equation, one that's used not as often as the previous, which is V equals the square root of tension over mu. If we went ahead and looked at unit analysis, which we're not gonna take a moment to do, but if you looked at the units inside of this radical, we have newtons over kilograms per meter. 
it will break down to meters per second, which I challenge you to do at this point in the curriculum. You should be comfortable getting that unit down to meters per second. Okay, so for an example of using this, this newer speed equation of speed of a wave in a string, let's look at this example. So a uniform string has a mass M of 0.03 kilograms and a length L of 6 meters. The tension is maintained in the string by suspending a block of mass 2 kilograms from one end. So here it is. So our goal is to find the speed of a transverse wave pulse on this particular string. So what that means is we're going to use this speed equation. V equals the square root T over mu. Well, in order to find mu, which is the linear mass density, mu is the amount of mass per length of string. So in our case, our mass is, of the string is 0 0.03 kilograms divided by the whole length of the string, which is 6 meters. So we get 0.03 divided by 6 meters, which gives us a linear mass density of 0 0.005 kilograms per meter. Now, if we're looking for tension, if we draw a free body diagram of this block, and in this case, we have to neglect the mass of the, of the string that is hanging, that is above the block itself in terms of our free body diagram only. So if we did include that, it would add an additional force, a weight force, but we're not going to include it. We're going to say it has no mass just for the free body diagram. So we have FT, tension up, and we have FG down. Since the block is just hanging and it's at rest, we know that the sum of these forces in the y direction on block must equal zero. So therefore, FT is equal to FG. Okay, so let's solve for that tension, FT, which really is capital T in this equation right here. It's going to equal FG, force of gravity of the block, which is M of the block times gravity. So the block itself weighs 2 kilograms, so 2 kg times 9.8 meters per second squared is going to equal 19.6 newtons. Okay, well now we can go ahead and plug these two pieces of information, 19.6 newtons and 0 0.005 kilogram per meters into our velocity equation. So velocity is the square root of 19.6 divided by 0 0.005. And we get a final answer of 62.6. Let's try that again. 62.6 meters per second for our velocity. Okay, so we just found that the velocity through the string was 62.6. So for part B, it asks us the time that it would take the pulse to travel from the wall to the pulley. So what that means is we're going to use a simple velocity equation, distance over time, because we know that the distance it has to travel from the wall to the pulley is only 5 meters. And we know the velocity is 62.6, so when we solve for time, we end up getting distance over velocity. So 5 meters divided by 62.6 meters per second, we get a time of 0 0.07 seconds. Okay, so let's go back to standing waves on a string. So let's look at that demo a little bit more closely in terms of uh, harmonics. So let's talk about it first and then we'll look at them again live.
So if we look at our visual here, this first letter, A, we call this the first harmonic. So this is the fundamental frequency, um, F1. We will incorporate this N equals 1 shortly. So this total, if this is length L, we're going to say L is going to equal however many wavelengths we have in that length. Well, in A, we have a half a wavelength. So L equals 1 half of wavelength. For our next harmonic, our second harmonic, the frequency um, 2, we're going to say the length is equal to one full wavelength, lambda 2. For our third harmonic, when if we look at our length L, we have one and a half waves, which is really three halves of a wave. Okay, so there's this pattern that we should start to see over here on this right hand side that the length is equal to whatever harmonic we're on, the number of harmonics, times lambda over 2. So once again for A, this was our first harmonic, so our N was equal to 1. So 1 times lambda over 2 is really just 1 half lambda. When we plug in our second harmonic, N equals 2, we get 2 lambda over 2, which is just lambda. And then when our third harmonic comes around, we plug in 3, we get 3 lambda over 2. We could rearrange this equation here and solve for lambda. If we did that, we would get lambda equals 2 times the length over n, which would actually be helpful for us when we actually start to solve over here. So if, if the velocity is frequency times lambda, we rearrange that speed equation and solve for f. f is v over lambda. And um, let's plug in, instead of lambda, we plug in this relationship down here. Lambda is equal to 2L over N. We get this equation. Frequency equals velocity times whatever harmonic we're on over 2L. This equation would be useful to find what frequency that is relative to the harmonic number and the So let's try an example. So let's say we have an 80 centimeter long string that has a mass of 40 grams and the string is placed under a tension of 1,000 newtons. Part A asks us to find the velocity of the, the transverse pulse through the string. Part B asks us to find the wavelength of the first harmonic or the fundamental harmonic. And C is the fundamental frequency. And then D asks us to find the wavelength and frequency of the second and third harmonic. Okay, well, let's start with part A. Let's find the uh, velocity first. Okay, so if we are looking for velocity, we know that for a string, since this particular string has mass and is under a certain amount of tension, that our equation is V equals square root of tension over mu. And mu is the linear mass density, which is the amount of mass per length. Our mass is 40 grams, which is really... 0.04 over top of our length, which is 80 centimeters. So in terms of meters, that's 0.8 meters. 
what is this, kilograms? So this mu is going to be plugged in right here. And our tension is 1,000 newtons. So that amount is going to be plugged into this numerator. So if we plug all of this in at one time, we should get 1,000 divided by 0 0.04 over 0 0.8. And you plug this into a calculator, you should get a speed of 141 meters per second. Okay, so that is the velocity of our wave, our transverse pulse through this string. No matter what harmonic we're talking about, it's still going to stay the same. Okay, so for part B, we know we just solve for our velocity. So our velocity is, velocity was 141 meters per second and we are looking for the wavelength of the first harmonic. So in this case, when we looked at our picture, the first harmonic is one half of a wave. So if this is our length L, and we can see that for the number of waves, we have lambda equals, to get one full wavelength, that must be 2L. But that, that originally came from L equals lambda over 2, just like shown in the previous slides. Okay, so let's look at our um, relationship here. Since we know that this length is 0 0.8 meters, and we are looking for lambda, we can just simply plug it in. And lambda is equal to 2L, so we have 2 times 0 0.8 meters which is 1.6 meters. That is the length of our wavelength. Part C asked us to find our frequency. So if we are looking for our fundamental frequency, we are looking for F. And we just found our lambda for our fundamental harmonic, and our lambda was, or our wavelength was, 1.6 meters. Well, our velocity equation is V equals F times lambda. We already know the velocity. It was 141 meters per second. And we're looking for F, so if we divide by lambda on both sides, lambda over lambda drops out, we get frequency is equal to velocity over wavelength. So 141 meters per second divided by 1.6 meters, we get 88.4 hertz as our fundamental frequency. Let's solve for the uh, second and third harmonic also for the wavelength and frequency of these. Okay. So for our second, so our second harmonic, we know that, so let's review really quickly the harmonics. Here was the first harmonic where uh, length is equal to one half lambda, and then our second harmonic is one full wave in that same length L. So L was equal to lambda. And our third harmonic has one and a half waves. If I can draw it correctly. So we have L equals three halves lambda for our third harmonic. Okay, so for the second, we have L equals lambda. Well, we know this length was 80 centimeters. So that means the wavelength must be 0 0.8 meters. Well, that's one of our unknowns. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the third. So the third is L equals 3 halves lambda. If we solve for lambda, we multiply by 2 thirds on both sides. So the wavelength equals 2 thirds times L, which is 2 thirds times 0 0.8. Which, um, if we plug that in, let me see, I'll calculate it also. So... 2 times 0.8 equals divided by 3, so 0.533. So 
zero. why it's messing up here on us. So let's try that again. So it was 0 0.533 meters. Sorry about all that other nonsense going on. Okay. And then if we solve for the frequency of each of these, our frequency, our velocity equals frequency times lambda. Well, let's solve for f. We get v over lambda. And our velocity is still the same as it was originally, which was 141 meters per second divided by 0 0.8 meters. We get a frequency of 176.2 hertz. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for this third harmonic. So frequency is velocity over lambda. Our velocity was 141 meters per second. And our wavelength was 0 0.53 continuous meters. So 141 divided by 0.5333. We get a frequency of 200 and 56 hertz. Okay, so as we can see that as our wavelength is decreasing from 0.8 to 0.53, our frequency is increasing from 176 to 256, which makes sense because they're inversely proportional to one another. Okay, so that's all for our standing waves examples, but I do want to take it back to the demos and show you each of the harmonics in that uh, video demonstration that we started out in this video.